So you want to make your keyboard hot swappable, but the vendor doesn't support a hot swappable PCB. What can you do? One of the most popular options is to use these little guys. These are hot swap sockets from Milmax. They come in various different sizes, but by far the most popular are the 305s and the 7305s. The 305s are 3.94mm tall, and the 7305s are 2.67mm tall. Personally, I tend to go with the 7305s to minimize the chances that there will be compatibility issues with builds that have very little space between the PCB and the bottom case. However, they are a little harder to solder, but don't worry, I'll give you some tips and tricks to make sure you do it the right way. Here's how this video is broken down. First, I'm going to show you how to solder them. Then I'm going to show you how to desolder them. Lastly, I'm going to test a ton of different switches on both of these to finally answer the question, what switches are compatible with Momax sockets? And are there switches that are compatible with one but not the other? You ready? Let's get started. Step 1. Use tweezers to carefully place one socket for each PCB hole that you would normally insert switch pins through. Remember you need two sockets for switch. You can use the tweezers or your thumb to push them through so that the head of the socket is flush against the board. Step 2. Insert switches into the sockets. This will ensure the sockets are aligned correctly so that you don't end up with crooked switches. The best way to do this is to use a plate to position the switches, and ideally the switches will be PCB mount, meaning they have these two little pins to ensure proper alignment. I strongly recommend against using Milmax sockets on plateless builds, as they'll be extra difficult to solder and will end up feeling wobbly. Step 3. Get your soldering materials ready. Your solder, soldering iron, brass sponge, a fume extractor, and my personal favorite tool, these magnifying glasses, which serve as both protection for your eyes while allowing you to zoom into what you're doing while shining a light directly on it. Heat up your soldering iron to whatever temperature you use to solder switches. For me, that's around 670 Fahrenheit, or around 354 Celsius. Step 4. Use the 3 second rule. Heat the pad and socket for 1 second. Feed the solder in for another second. Then leave the iron on the pad for the final second. Your goal here is to cover the pad surrounding the socket with solder without getting any solder into the socket itself. Make sure you don't leave the iron on the PCB much longer than 3 or 4 seconds to prevent damaging the PCB. Step 5. When you're done soldering, test that the switches come out of the sockets. Do not use excessive force when pulling on the switch or you'll either rip off the switch pins from the switch or lift the pad from the PCB. If the switch is stuck, chances are you got soldered into the socket and you're going to have to live with it or desolder the switch, which we'll go over shortly. Soldering the 7305s is actually identical to soldering the 305s, but they're a little more annoying to insert into the PCB as they're significantly shorter and you have to take extra care when soldering to ensure that you use as little solder as possible. Remember you don't have to solder it completely in one go. You can feed solder multiple times as long as you don't get solder into the opening of the socket. I recommend you make a habit of using a small amount of solder in general so that your technique for soldering switches and sockets is the same. That brings us to desoldering. We'll cover two cases, removing a switch that has solder in the socket and removing a socket on its own. Unlike desoldering switches, a desoldering pump and a desoldering gun won't work as well here because the sockets are flushed against the walls of the hole, making it really difficult to suck the entirety of the solder using a hand pump and they're a little too wide to be used with a desoldering gun, so we'll have to take a more manual approach. Also keep in mind you won't be able to reuse the sockets after desoldering them using the techniques I'm going to show you below, so make sure you buy extras. Here you're seeing me drown the socket in solder to simulate what would happen if you accidentally get solder inside the socket. To remove a switch that has solder inside of the socket, apply heat directly to the tails of the socket, alternating between the two, until you're able to pull up the switch from the other end using tweezers. Do not use your fingers directly to pull on the switch, as you risk hurting yourself. More often than not, the sockets will remain in the PCB after you've removed the switch. To remove a socket on its own, apply heat to the solder and gently push downward on the socket. The goal here is not to push the socket all the way through, but to slide it down far enough so that the lip of the socket is elevated on the other side of the PCB. You'll notice some solder will have spilled into the other end of the PCB. If you don't see any solder on the other side, add a small amount. Reheat the solder on this side of the PCB while using tweezers to pull on the lip of the socket gently. After a second or two, the socket should lift off with little force. Once again, make sure you never leave the iron on the PCB for more than a few seconds as you'll risk lifting a pad by accident. Now onto the switch compatibility test. I've got a 305 socket on this slot and a 7305 socket on this one. I'm going to grab as many different kinds of switches as I can find and I'm going to test them for compatibility. Instead of boring you with the entire footage, here's a time lapse and a table with the result of testing 34 different switches on both of these sockets. The results are grouped by level of difficulty with the most difficult to solder shown at the top. Notice I didn't split out the result of testing between the 305 and 7305 because every switch I tested worked on both of these, so I believe they have identical compatibility. 
Ultimately, I was able to make everything fit with enough force, but I highly recommend you avoid any switch that is marked as difficult, and especially those that are marked as very difficult, as it's honestly not worth the trouble. You'll risk doing some serious damage when applying that much force on the PCB, and the friction of the sockets will deteriorate significantly faster after you've inserted these switches. And that's all for today. If your experience using Milmex sockets was different from mine, or if you want me to test switches that I didn't cover in this video, let me know in the comments below. I'll leave a compatibility spreadsheet in the description of this video that'll keep up to date with all the switches that I've tested. I've got a lot of content coming up and I'm planning on making a Twitch channel soon so that we can build cool things together. If that's something you'd be interested in, remember to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Bye!